A reading from the Gospel according to St Mark, the 15th chapter, beginning at the 15th verse. So to pacify the crowds, Pontius Pilate released Barabbas to them. He ordered Jesus to be flogged with a lead-tipped whip, then turned him over to the Roman soldiers to be crucified. The soldiers took Jesus into the courtyard of the governor's headquarters, called the Praetorium, and they called out the entire regiment. They dressed him in a purple robe, and they wove thorn branches into a crown and put it on his head. Then they saluted him and taunted, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck him on the head with a reed stick, spit on him, dropped to their knees in mocked worship. When they were finally tired of mocking him, they took off the purple robe, and put his own clothes on him again. Then they led Jesus away to be crucified. Here ends our reading. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. We come now into the last chapel for this, the Easter term. This is what we call part of Holy Week as we move from Palm Sunday which we celebrated on Sunday, where Jesus rode into Jerusalem in triumph, with the crowds cutting down palm branches and laying their cloaks on the road, shouting Hosanna to God, through to where Jesus celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples and gave them the instruction, whenever you do this, remember me, remember what I'm doing for you as he pointed forward to what was to come. Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane to pray, and it was there that he was betrayed by one of his closest friends, Judas Iscariot. He was handed over to the authorities, firstly the Jewish authorities, who abused him, and then over to the Roman authorities, who attacked him and beat him up and hurt him badly, and then ultimately took him out to die on the cross. Calvary. That is Good Friday in our traditional understanding of the day. And you might well ask, why is it a good day? Why would we call it Good Friday if that's the day that Jesus died on the cross? It's the day that marks the, the turning point, if you like, of our understanding as humans. Because it's the day where God shows in a once and for all time experience just how much he loves you and me. That he was prepared to go to any lengths to show us his love. And it's a good day because Jesus cleansed us from all our sin. He took our sin away, that barrier that was holding us back from experiencing God's love in all its fullness. Jesus took that away through the love he showed on that cross. In dying for you and me. And it is a Good Friday because it's followed by Easter Sunday, the day where we celebrate Jesus rising from the dead, the day where we celebrate the fact that through his love and through his obedience to God's will, Jesus has opened the doors of heaven for you and I, that even death has been defeated. Even death cannot hold us back from God's love. So my prayer for each one of us as we go into these Easter holidays is that we would know that wonderful love that Jesus has for us, that he showed for us on that cross, and that we might be filled with the Holy Spirit in this time of celebration and of sadness and of great joy at the resurrection. May God be with you and may God bless you. In the name of God. Amen. Let us pray. Eternal God and Father of all, your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, having taken on our human nature, fulfilled your will by taking that nature to the cross and giving his life for us. Father, we are not worthy of the sacrifice that Jesus offered of himself. Help us to follow his example, to walk in his way of humility, and to know and to trust in your great love, 
every step of our journey. Fill us, Lord, with your Spirit, that we may know your truth, and we may walk in that truth today and every day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.